Hello and welcome back to Core Finance. I'm Matt Brown. I'm joined by Peter Watson from WatsonWiFi.com. How are you today, Peter? Yeah, very well, thank you. Good, good. Starting off, what is Watson Wi-Fi and what do you do? So basically, Watson's Wi-Fi is a daily weekday blog um, that identifies the sort of relevant um, commercial and economic news um, of the day. Um, and basically, I do that to help people uh, make the boring news more interesting. Good stuff. Lots to talk about this week, uh, lots going on Absolutely. in the news. Uh, kicking off, well, what are the key headlines? Okay, well, so I guess on the on the political front, you've got a lot of uh, Trump, war, Trump warmongering. You've got the violent aftermath after the uh, Kenyan election, uh, where Odinga has disputed the president's uh, Kenyatta's re-election. Uh, and then you've got South Africa President Zuma actually surviving his uh, mm -hmm. vote of no confidence. So well, that was all quite interesting. Uh, but in terms of actual themes, for this week in terms of you know companies and and uh, and, and trends um, I've got three things so one is the UK consumer secondly is a bit on innovation and thirdly it's also about sort of tech as well so um, on the UK front, uh, pensioners are apparently getting richer, um, according to ONS stats. Uh, they say that the average, uh, was it gross uh, income for pensioners, has actually tripled, tripled that is, between 1977 and 2016, while the work everyone else's has yeah. merely doubled. Um, well, what are they spending on? They're not spending on their grandkids. Well, I think actually I don't know. This is the old the old uh, bank of mum and dad, isn't there? So I mean, you know, th I think that there there were. Um, uh, to blame in a way for some of the <laughs> for, for some of the house price rises, um, but um, but you know obviously uh, buy Saga I say potentially. <laughs> do, you, do you think they're doing the the skiing as it's called? Spend the kids' inheritance, or are they putting the money away? Uh, there might be a bit of both there, I think. But um, but no, very, I think it's very in, you know very interesting, and obviously the the grey pound uh, is a very interesting area to be in. Mm. Um, then obviously the and then the rest of us got a, got an unexpected. Um, wage increase of a mass it, it's absolutely massive so it's a good job we're sitting down um, <laughs> but the Bank of England published a report that was saying that uh, our wages are increasing by two to three uh, percent annually as opposed to what they thought before two to two point five percent so it's a big increase I know I know the holidays buy the cars well the deposit down I, I know I'm, I'm sure the queues are, are forming outside the Lambo <laughs> garage as we speak um, but then after that um, we're also you know despite all that we're paying more for food, so that was according to some um, British retail consortium figures that were out uh, earlier this week. Uh, although the overall trend in terms of spending is actually going down, that was according to some fig figures out from Visa. And if you don't believe those kind of figures, um, there was also some other stuff uh, as well, talking about big, the spend on big ticket items, so specifically cars. So the Society of Motor Manufacturers and <laughs> Traders um, said that. Um, uh, that car sales were down by 9.3% year on year, so that's that's uh, quite interesting. And then uh, sofas, of course, uh, for for the wonderful DFS, um, you know, they they had some pretty poor results yeah, yesterday as well. Yeah. So um, maybe we will be, you know, I mean, on the upside, maybe we'll see some slightly less annoying adverts uh, on <laughs> on TV. Um, they always seem to have a sale. I mean, it's interesting yeah. as well how that feeds through to the credit market. So yes. DFS are always offering sofas on credit. I yeah. bought one myself. But also cars as well. And there's been a lot of talk about a credit, consumer credit. Bubble. That's right, yeah. So actually, I suppose in a way, if, if these sales are slowing down, then hopefully that credit bubble isn't getting as big as... Yeah. I, it's, well, it's, I think it's still getting bigger, but it's maybe slowing slowing down, possibly. Um, but, uh, but anyway, so that, 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 was, that was quite interesting. Then on to uh, the second thing, innovation. Um, I think it was very interesting this week that you had uh, Mazda actually announced a new type of engine which doesn't have spark plugs. Now that makes the engine actually 30% uh, more efficient than, than the normal engine. Mm -hmm. um, and again, could spend, uh, spell as, uh, put another nail in the coffin of diesel. Um, so, yeah, and that's the, the thing with diesel and petrol engines and a lot of the major car manufacturers have come out and said actually we, we, we don't want to manufacture any more petrol or diesel yeah, yeah. cars but whereas Mazda are saying we're going to still do that yeah. but we're going to make more efficient ones. Yeah. Do you, do you think they missed the trick here or, or actually they may benefit from that? Uh, I don't know really. I mean, I suppose that with Mazda, um, they're quite no, well known for having kind of innovative mm -hmm. um, sort of, you know, engineering. Uh, I mean, I think, wasn't it? I've forgotten which car it was now, but they had some sort of 
you know, rotary something engine. Mm, <laughs> I'm yes, not into yeah, that sort of thing. Not, not a piston, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. that, yeah. And, um, you know, I, I, I don't see anyone else particularly uh, going for that. So, and, and, I, and I don't hear, you know, if you're down the pub, you don't hear people sort of supping pints and sort of going, do you know what, I think that, that rotary whatever engine uh, <laughs> is just absolutely fabulous. Everyone should just forget about everything else. So yeah. I think they kind of a bit, it seems to me that Mazda kind of a bit outliers on that, and it's quite good. I mean, the overall thing, though, is it's, a good, it's good to innovate away from the existing diesel technology. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I think that's, that's a good thing. Um, but then, the other, other than that, um, we had Apple early, well, at end of last week, beginning of this week, talking about the new gen generation of their watch. Um, this is really interesting because this is going to be the first time that one of these watch devices is not going to have to be tethered to your phone. Yes. Um, so I think that addresses a big, big criticism of, of the watch thus far. Uh, and I think that this is going to be, you know, or potentially, I hate to use the phrase, but potentially game changer. Mm. You know, it is going to bring us closer to the uh, Inspector Gadget dream, <laughs> um, you know, and, of, of doing your phone and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, all very interesting. The other interesting thing as well, of course, is the fact that they, they intimated that what they're going to do is go on to a sort of two-year cycle for the watch as a pro uh, uh, the product cycle mm -hmm. just like the phone so first year innovation second year the s version and then um you know and then after that you get the new version again so that's probably what's going to happen okay and so. it, will that be an alternative years to the phone probably so they it, yeah so the product gap and the announcement so, gap yeah I, I think they'll probably Apple, they'll probably do that. that yeah to camouflage the whole thing and <laughs> the general disappointment that people will feel if they've just managed to buy something just before a new one comes out um anyway so there you go so that was that, that was second and then um on the tech front there were some really interesting articles this week on um on facebook and basically how they kill the opposition um they apparently they have some kind of early warning system which identifies sort of you know uh, up and coming uh, popular apps and then what they then tend to do They're probably just kid you know, well yeah well exactly kids, so exactly that's, yeah that's a cheap way to do that's it. right that's right so so anyway so they um, they then they then investigate it they look at it you know they look at how why it's important mm. why it's trending um, and then they probably then go along make a bit of a cheeky bid potentially um, usually to get rebuffed and then they go and make it themselves. Yep. Now, there's a really good, uh, interesting one. Um, there's a, an app called House Party, um, which apparently is a, uh, it's, it's a sort of a live video chat room mm -hmm. for your friends. Um, and, um, you know, that, that has been getting really, really popular. So, so much so that actually Facebook did go and have a look and, you know, looked mm -hmm. into buying it when they got rebuffed. Um, they come out and they're going to introduce a new service called Bonfire, which is exactly the same um, in, in this autumn. So, you know, I mean... It's, it's good that they're looking at that and they're trying yeah. to innovate. And if, if we develop an app, yeah. then we've got to make sure we protect our intellectual Absolutely. property rights um, uh, so it, they don't steal it. Exactly, but it's, but it's so difficult, so yeah. difficult. And the thing is, with, with Facebook years ago, when they came along, they actually didn't have anyone else breathing down their neck. Not seriously, anyway. Ooh. Whereas... Anyone now that has any kind of decent idea is immediately going to have Facebook on their, on their back and it's going to be a nightmare. I mean, Snap is a brilliant example of this. Yep. So this, again, interesting statistic, right? So you've got uh, Instagram stories added 100 million new users in the first half of this year versus Snapchat with the original idea who added 15 million in the same period. So, show, yeah. you know, it's an absolute nightmare. So a seller of Snap, buyer of Facebook. There you go. There you go. And then, um, but then other than that, um, Tesla, it's another one of my sort of pet, uh, pet subjects, <laughs> um, is that I, do, I like, um, well, it's interesting, obviously, they, they asked yet again uh, for more money, this time via a one and a half billion dollar bond. Um, I mean, it looks like that apparently there's, there's appetite for new bonds uh, mm -hmm. in the market. So maybe, you know. I think it's, it's two times oversubscribed. Yes. I mean, people, that doesn't mean you should own it. Though. Yeah. I mean, it's weird, isn't it? I mean, because I, I think logic tells you that it can't be worth, I mean, from an equity point of view, it cannot be worth more than GM or Ford mm -hmm. or whatever. But it is. Yes. And, and, you know, similarly, you shouldn't really buy it. But then, you know, it's 
Tesla and everyone, you know, it's all there. So anyway, so that's quite interesting. Um, but obviously it needs it to go from niche player to mass market. Yes. Uh, and then the other really exciting thing or slightly worrying thing um, is that um, there was a leaked, me or a leaked memo um, that went to the DMV in Nevada uh, they, where Tesla were asking to operate our prototype test trucks in a continuous manner across the state line and within the states of Nevada and California in a platooning and or autonomous mode without having a person in the vehicle. Now driverless that, trucks, yeah. basically. Now that sounds pretty <laughs> scary to me. I mean, I, driverless trucks aren't a new thing. I think they've no. been t testing them in Germany and things a while ago. But, you know, electric driverless trucks. I mean, how many, how many, bo how many more boxes could you tick um, on, on, that, on that front? But Maybe we, the snap, we, perhaps. We, yeah, but we saw in Clapham yesterday, a bus driver passed out at the wheel and ploughed into a shop. So that's yes. with a driver at the wheel. So, yes. you know, I, I think it might take a bit of time for attitudes to change. Yeah, but. I think the only thing with that, though, is that with a person, you can blame someone. Mm -hmm. You can blame one person, whereas with this, there is no way. You, you, you basically will take the manufacturer or the, the big company to court, which yes. is always going to cost loads of money. So mm -hmm. that's, that's the sort of major problem, really. And lots to obviously look at and talk about this week. Uh, have you got anything um, more jovial in a grim week where we could, you well, know, World War Three yeah. could be uh, around the corner? Yeah, well, funnily enough, uh, funny you should ask that. Um, yes, indeed. Um, uh, I came across a number of fo interesting photos mm -hmm. this week. One of them was um, something that you are unlikely to see in your local Sainsbury's anytime soon. So this is in, a, in Walmart. Um, it was actually supposedly a mistake. Um, you know, uh, mm. own the school, own the school year like a hero. Uh, sign above, directly above a gun rack. Uh, now, apparently, the managers did take that sign away when they realised what they'd done. <laughs> but you kind of think, why didn't anyone notice before that? Um, but there you go. So that's one of them. And then the other one is that um, some people do joke around and say. You know, if you if your photograph, if your passport photo, if you look like your passport mm. photograph, you should be worried. Well, <laughs> and this this lady should be particularly worried. She looks all right there, mm -hmm. but then when she got her passport photo, this is what happened. Um, <laughs> so well, you, what happened there? So I, I I don't know, but. Um, she did manage to get it redone, in case you were wondering. Yeah. But, and, uh, and I like comparative, there's a thumb there. Yes. Because she yes. actually looks like a bit of a thumb. Yes, yes, there you go. So, so uh, um, be, be aware, always check. Yeah, uh, always check your passport photograph. Exactly. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, on that note, Peter, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you very much.